Welcome everyone. Uh, pleased to have Janelle Leafblad here. Um, she's going to give a presentation on Woodworks. She's based in Portland, Oregon, which we love. Um, I think our desktop sharing is already ready to go. Before we begin, I do, as always, want to thank the U.S. Forest Service and the Tallwood Design Institute for the support for making this possible and our speakers for making time to do this. Janelle, welcome. You're a pro. I look forward to learning more about Woodworks and your work. Take it away. Thanks so much for having me today, Greg. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited to talk to you about uh, the Woodworks program and what we do uh, here in the U.S. around growing our, our market demand. But I, I can't really start that presentation without acknowledging that, you know, there's a lot of international associations. I don't know how many of you were just on um, Peter's talk right before mine. Uh, so he shared several of the, the Nordic countries and um, what they're doing and getting together uh, and involved with in terms of growing wood demand in, in those countries. Um, I certainly have really enjoyed making connections at uh, uh, Australia's Wood Solutions uh, team, um, New Zealand's Woodworks team, uh, and of course um, our partners and friends at the Canadian Wood Council uh, that's, um, they have a, a program called Woodworks and they also have a program called Wood Smart. Um, but today I'm really focused on what we're doing here in the, the US. We're uh, called uh, Woodworks, the Wood Products Council. Um, and also it's not just us in the US um, that, that are working towards uh, wood and, and the market share. Um, we work hand in hand with the American Wood Council, that's AWC, with uh, APA, with Think Wood, with uh, the U.S. Forest Service and the Forest Products Lab and others. And, you know, the American Wood Council is focused on co-development. Um, Think Wood is doing that high level marketing uh, for, for wood in the U.S. and um, and also uh, the Forest Products Laboratory and others are really focused on the research end. So Woodworks, if you think of us as sort of a, a, another cog in this, in this wheel, um, Woodworks, we are educators and people who do project support. So uh, we're meant, our team is meant to grow um, market demand in, in that way. And of course we work hand in hand with the North American um, manufacturers and distributors of, of wood products. So when you look at the, the market growth opportunity in the, the US, you know, there's a lot of projects that are built on an annual basis that could be wood by our codes here in the US, but aren't. And so, um, and you can look across several sectors at that. You know, even within multifamily, which is the strongest and uses um, a significant um, market share goes towards wood products. Uh, there's a lot of space in the commercial and institutional and, and now we have new opportunities in high rise uh, within code. So there's a lot of places that wood could be. Um, and part of that is just letting people know that it's a possibility. Um, to build with wood. So our goal at Woodworks is to do this, is to do our mission in, in two um, very distinct ways. One's through education, and we provide lots of uh, conferences and symposiums, um, right down to, I'm often in people's offices in the non-COVID era, uh, giving presentations to um, a project team or to the whole office. Um, about wood and wood products. And then, uh, then we also sit with project teams and uh, answer questions. And it could be something um, as simple as, will you check out this detail? Or um, as, as broad as, you know, we're still in conceptual design and this is what we're thinking, can you help us brainstorm? So that's really our, our goal and our space. In this, uh, in this market share. So I, I'll split that out in, uh, for you in terms of education. This is our 2021 education plan. Um, we're doing two major symposiums in quarter two and quarter four. We're involved in lots of third-party events. 
um, namely the Mass Timber Conference that's coming up at the end of this month. Um, the, the American Institute of Architects, uh, we, we always have a big presence there. And then um, advancing mass timber construction, that'll be in the fall. Uh, and then every month we do a free webinar uh, around a, a, a variety of wood topics. Um, some of them are mass timber, some are not. And then we'll have a whole series throughout the year of workshops. Um, again, some on mass timber, some not, some a mix, uh, some hybrid. And then uh, three times this year, we'll be giving um, our construction management workshop trainings and, and I'll go more into what that looks like later. Um, we do local networking events and then each of us uh, in our various areas do regional events. So there's always a lot going on. It's always busy at Woodworks. And then specifically around mass timber, um, we have this long, <laughs> For us, we have a long timeline in the US uh, around um, how we've been supporting mass timber construction. Uh, you'll notice in 2013, we had our first US CLT symposium, um, and that was an in person symposium. And then it kind of snowballed from there, um, really. In, in 2014, we were uh, assisting those project teams with about 20 projects. Today, we're assisting about 300 projects. So um, I think I heard Greg say on one of the earlier presentations, it's this hockey stick, right? It's this exponential growth of mass timber construction in the US. Um, and we're supporting that in lots of different ways uh, through partnership with the, the Mass Timber Conference and the Forest Business Network. Um, through uh, launching um, several platforms around mass timber and then putting mass timber in our symposium tracks and educational tracks. So uh, lots of things going on there. And to really show that uh, this map lives on our website. I know Brian uh, Brayshaw showed this the other day in his presentation. So this map lives on our website. It's updated quarterly with a breakdown of the mass timber projects that are in design or in construction by state, as well as um, a national breakdown of mass timber by um, product type. So you can say, you know, hey, I'm located in Missouri. What's happening in my state? Um, and get kind of a, a breakdown by that. But you can also look at it nationally and say, how many of these projects are going with cross laminated timber? How many are going with Dow laminated timber, um, et cetera? So um, right now we have uh, over a thousand projects that we know about, whether they're um, built projects. So 462 built projects that we know about um, and 598 projects that are in design. So um, that funnel is always growing. And then uh, I mentioned earlier that we're excited about the new code provisions here in the US that rolled out for 2021 uh, because they're giving wood more opportunities in that tall, that seven plus story range that we haven't had that opportunity in the US before. So right now we know about um, over 100 tall wood projects that are in design. I also want to share how we're funded. The Woodworks program is, uh, is our funding partners are the Softwood Lumber Board, the USDA Forest Service, and Forestry Innovation Investment. We also have additional um, board and market development partners who support our program. So um, uh, across all different types of wood products and wood manufacturers. And we have a directory on our website that lists all of our partners, um, plus how you can contact them, um, because, uh, you know, it, it's always good to put names to these companies, right? You want to know who you can reach out to. So you can do that through our website, how you contact them and get more information about their um, products and services. The Woodworks team uh, is, is a big one um, for a nonprofit. Uh, so I'm located in the Pacific Northwest. As Greg mentioned, I'm sitting here in Portland and I support 
uh, Washington and Idaho, Alaska and Hawaii as well. Um, and I have team members all across the US uh, supporting those local regional markets. So um, if you're located in the US, reach out to your local, um, your local regional director and get to know us because uh, we're, we're really trying to keep a finger on the pulse of what's happening in each jurisdiction, in each state, um, how the code's changing, because uh, there's just a lot of variety of uh, what happens in the US for just one person to know, right? We also have a, a great staff team. Our president and CEO is Jennifer Cover. Uh, I know Steve mentioned her the other day and really the, the strength of the Woodwork team has, Woodwork's team has really grown under Jennifer's leadership. And um, we have a, a solutions team. They're really, I think of them as kind of the, the wizards behind the curtain, um, developing our content and really providing um, quick responses on our help desk team. And then um, our, our lead management and marketing division, uh, they're the ones holding and, and hosting our, all of our events um, throughout the year. So uh, a lot of times I get asked this question, you know, what do you do? What is a typical day like for Woodworks? And um, of course there, there really is no typical day. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I suppose just like anyone else, right? Any typical day is actually sitting at your desk, typing answers to a lot of emails or taking phone calls. Um, but it's, it's a lot more than that, of course. So I wanted to offer you some sort of uh, uh, idea of, of what goes on kind of behind the scenes, what we mean by project support. Um, so uh, I've, I've had a lot of instances where I've had someone contact me, um, uh, come up to me after an event and say, uh, hey, I, I thought the education I learned here was really valuable. Could you come and give it to our office? Um, it should be more than just me that knows about this. And so I'll go into an office um, or uh, Zoom into an office these days and, uh, and give a presentation. And then um, maybe uh, I'll, I'll hear back from them to say, hey, we've got a project that talked about this, whether it was our first a type three project and we wanted to do five stories and, and we need some help figuring out uh, this area of the code that we're unfamiliar with. Um, and then, uh, so then I can sit down with them and, and say, um, you know, let's talk about three hour firewalls and what that means in your jurisdiction and what that means for your code and what that means in terms of materials, especially in a wood project. And we'll talk through any um, alternative means and methods processes that they need to go through, any um, detailing like at shaft walls, at floor diaphragms and continuity issues. Uh, so we can get really into the weeds. And then, um, and then you know, just uh, questions as, as one off as, um, you know, what do I need to consider for my um, moisture management risk mitigation? Um, to questions as, as large as, you know, my insurance agent does not understand this. How do we talk to them about it? So um, really kind of across the map. And that's what Woodworks is really set up to do is um, not just be raw, raw wood cheerleaders, but to really be a support and resource system. So I wanted to walk through some of those um, uh, in terms of what's uh, uh, what kinds of questions that we get asked and how we provide that support. So here's a common question that comes in about uh, noise and, and noise transfer um, when in particular with mass timber. So in order to address acoustics, we produced an acoustics guide and an acoustic tested assembly index. So that's available for free on our website um, it's all about you know, how to detail the, the mass timber structure to achieve the desired acoustic performance um, to meet what's, uh, what, uh, what's in code and to exceed code um, when the, the design calls for that. Another common question that comes up is around fire. You know, everybody has a question about uh, a fire. And you know, for any, project for any product, 
Um, fire is no one's friend, right? Concrete explodes, steel melts, wood burns. Fire is always an issue and it's certainly an issue um, in the code. And so for mass timber, we have uh, again, developed fire design guides and uh, a, a tested fire assembly index that's again, available for free on our website. Um, it's constantly being updated because just like the acoustic assemblies, um, those are always being tested. And so the, the fire tests that are uh, ongoing, they get added to our index uh, as they happen. So that is a, that is a very live link um, that definitely changes over time. If you're in the US, if you've used that in the past, um, I would uh, encourage you to go back to our website and um, download it again, because it's probably been updated. I think um, I was with a, a state fire marshal about um, a year and a half ago, and I had printed out the index for him, um, and it, I counted in that there were 77 tested assemblies at that time. I think there's um, a few more since then. Uh, just today, I got an email this morning about mass timber costs and, and how, to, how to figure that out um, because there really aren't generalized costs out there. Mass timber is not a commodity material, although it's made with commodity lumber. Um, and so to, uh, to get towards a solution for that, we made a mass timber cost and design optimization checklist again, available for free download on our website um, so that teams can really uh, figure out what's important to them. Um, everyone wants a, a project that is within cost. And there are a lot of things that go into that um, that really impact those cost decisions, things around fire design, things around connection design, and, uh, and figuring that out as early as possible helps control and optimize those costs. We certainly have heard um, hurdles around uh, code. And so we've spent a lot of time um, in conjunction with the American Wood Council around uh, code. The American Wood Council is the one um, taking care of, of writing uh, and, and proposing code changes for the wood industry in the US. Um, and Woodworks, we have um, tried to summarize that for design professionals. So we have a, a Tall Wood Buildings uh, white paper on our website, again, for free download. Um, so this is a, a, a concise summary around the code changes that were um, approved a couple of years ago and now um, open to designers that are using the 2021 International Building Code. Uh, oftentimes people just want to see what does one look like. Um, I'd love to take everyone on a, on a tour in your own backyard, um, but, uh, but, and we'll certainly return to doing that when we can, um, but there's lots of successful mass timber projects and we've created um, case studies around several of them. Uh, currently we have nine case studies on our website. You know, they're not one pagers, they're pretty hefty documents. Uh, they go deep in, into um, the architecture, to the engineering. Uh, we talk to the contractors uh, and uh, so that you, you really get a good look at what went into that project. Um, so uh, uh, lots more uh, underway. And then a, a common hurdle that we've certainly seen um, in the last few years as, you know, it Mass timber is fairly new in the US since 2013, um, but with this exponential growth, then people get excited about it, which absolutely we want. We wanna grow market demand, but then this is a common hurdle um, that they've designed it, but now who can build it? So we've been working on this uh, for installer, for in a couple of, of ways. One is with um, installer training. Uh, for union and when we're working on a non-union component to this as well. So um, we helped the, we helped several different um, organizations, the Chicago Carpenters Training Center. Um, at last count, there was over uh, 2,400 training hours 
Um, so lots of people are being trained at the Chicago Carpenters Training Center on mass timber. And you can see here the very full size mock-ups uh, with different mass timber products, um, with different mass timber connections. Also, we're working with the Northwest Carpenters Institute um, to date, uh, uh, 136 hours of training uh, have gone there. So um, we're expanding that program in 2021. The other part is, of course, um, from a general contractor, if they're not familiar with it, um, we've certainly heard from design teams that uh, they've gotten the owner on board, everyone's you know, thumbs up, this is a, a mass, going to be a mass timber project, and then it hasn't gone forward because the contractor um, didn't know how to cost it or wasn't prepared for it. So we've certainly been working on construction management training. I mentioned that we've got workshops uh, for that that we did last year. We'll be doing three more of those this year. And uh, uh, so stay tuned for those because um, there, there are several different speakers from the construction industry uh, around that. So we're expanding um, our, our 2021 construction training in terms of we're writing a, a mass timber construction manual. We've got um, a new installer training package uh, that can be delivered um, and uh, mock-ups um, with training centers. Um, we're rolling out the program to community colleges. We're engaging with ever more uh, and more GCs. We're doing all these in-person and virtual workshops and um, of course project tours are a part of that as well. There's always a project in the US uh, underway. It's just um, the window of time that panels actually fly is fairly short. So uh, consider yourself lucky if you've gotten to see one of those in person. And then from the design perspective, um, especially when it comes to tall mass timber, um, here in the US, we're all getting our feet wet with that. So um, for that hurdle, we have assigned two of our Woodworks team members um, specifically to uh, be mass timber experts and to be a tall wood expert. So Scott Brenneman is taking charge of um, mass timber in terms of he sits on lots of committees. Um, he's involved in a PRG through uh, PRG 320 and, um, and, and lots of other things with the, the SPIDWIS and ASCE 7. Um, so Scott keeps his finger on the pulse of that. And then Ricky McLean is dedicated to uh, the, the Tallwood expertise. Ricky has a, wears a lot of different hats, um, but, but the Tallwood is, is one of his specialties. So we do have two team members specifically dedicated towards mass timber. And then uh, this has come up in the past about um, wood use on military projects. And so to facilitate that, um, we, uh, we did some blast testing, uh, which is you know, really interesting and fun. And we've got some great white papers um, written about it. So you know, if you're a design professional and you're thinking, you know, hey, uh, I, I'd like to consider um, you know, a, a different style of construction for this uh, police academy or um, for just a variety of things that might require uh, standoff distances. I would never have thought that I could have used um, uh, wood in this project. I want to assure you that uh, there's a possibility. Um, so definitely check out our summary report on our website. So that's uh, available. And, um, and we've done some presentations on that in the past at the Mass Timber Conference. And I think um, uh, at least one of those, I believe, is, is available for download on um, uh, the Forest Business Network's YouTube channel. Uh, so part of the hurdle around mass timber, um, and, and it doesn't sound like it's specific to the, the US, but it seems like a global uh, issue as well, is around supply chain. You know, where, where do we get our mass timber from? So in the US here at Woodworks, we uh, partnered with several different partners, 
and we have a, a contact reference leave behind that we give to everyone. Um, it's available uh, on our website. It's uh, the directory as well. So, um, and, and there are you know, direct links to people's email addresses so that everyone can establish relationships with their um, local, regional, national, international uh, connections around Mass Timber. So from a structural perspective, we've certainly learned that um, vibration governs uh, more in mass timber design than strength, uh, but vibration isn't codified. It isn't something um, that we turn to in the code. So uh, we're underway and this is coming out in a couple of weeks at the mass timber conference in connection with several other partners um, uh, under a grant from the Wood Innovation Grant, uh, we developed a, a US mass timber floor vibration design guide. My colleague Scott Brenneman will be talking about that at the mass timber conference. Um, three worked examples in that, so uh, really valuable to the design community um, and uh, reviewed by several partners as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, similarly, for diaphragms, um, we've definitely heard from designers that they want more guidance on how to design uh, diaphragms with mass timber. Um, so we've established a, and uh, assisted in writing a mass timber diaphragm design guide. Um, so you see our partners there on the screen. Uh, again, some design examples, uh, some connection um, detailing. Uh, and, and, a, and it is synchronized with the uh, seismic design provisions, I'm sorry, the, the design provisions for wind and seismic uh, that is authored by the American Wood Council and, and the 2021 was just released. Um, also that synchronized with the ASCE 7 um, 2022 that is, uh, that is going to be released next year. So another hurdle uh, that we hear around cost estimating, um, and so uh, particularly around effective um, connection detailing. So again, another thing that will be released at the Mass Timber Conference from Woodworks is um, this partner uh, white paper that we've written um, in conjunction with uh, KLNA uh, all around uh, cost-effective connections. So um, lots of information that will be coming out on that. Uh, I've gotten a sneak preview and it's really exciting to look through. So uh, stay tuned for that. And then um, uh, one of the things I think that comes up in my daily job is uh, around getting uh, authority, having jurisdiction, uh, uh, their approval in different projects. Um, you know, I, I think we've heard from others uh, in the past several weeks around industrialized construction and and sort of, um, you know, not building so many snowflakes, <laughs> but we certainly, um, as much as we build different buildings, each jurisdiction is slightly different as well in what they accept. And so um, uh, we work together on uh, connecting design teams with um, research to facilitate um, problems that certain jurisdictions are having, uh, uh, and whether that's, you know, and that's definitely on a regional basis. So whether that's here in the Pacific Northwest or whether that's down in Florida, um, we work with uh, our research partners uh, to, uh, to facilitate that. Uh, I mentioned some um, uh, what the work that we're doing with our general contractors um, around education for installation. Um, another thing that will be uh, talked about and updated at the uh, Mass Timber Conference, my colleague uh, Jason and, uh, and Brandon will be talking about this on day two and track two. They'll present an, an update and a likely timeline for its release but we are working on a mass timber construction manual 
Um, we've had a lot of input from a, a whole variety of general contractors with lots of mass timber experience here in the US and we're getting manufacturer input as well. So uh, hopefully that gets released. I, I believe it's intended to be released this year, um, but uh, stay tuned for Jason and Brandon's presentation on day two of the Mass Timber Conference for an update on that. So even with all this exponential growth, with all of the resources that Woodworks has put out um, over the years, towards solving a lot of these things. Um, there's still projects, of course, that haven't moved forward with mass timber. And so um, one of the things that we've done uh, over the last year has been to do an in-depth study on um, projects that we knew about that had uh, been designed with mass timber, but didn't go forward for some reason. Um, uh, why did they revert back to uh, other materials? And so that uh, is being released on March 26th. Uh, it's again, free to download. So it'll be um, available to anyone who wants to, to comb through it. Um, this nationwide study to, to look at um, uh, what's been happening there. Um, they're really broken down into things that are, uh, this project didn't go forward and we've made progress in that area of why. And so here are the resources for that, as well as um, things that are more like, um, it didn't go forward for this reason. And here's um, something that we're still working on to develop resources for. And then of course, there are projects that didn't go forward for other reasons that we still don't have a really good handle on, on uh, how to solve that particular um, hurdle and so things for us to work on for the future. And then uh, some of it is just a hurdles around connection. Um, and so I like opportunities like this where um, uh, you know you can get to know me a little bit better, you can get to know a little bit more about woodworks in general. Um, but as a, as a developer, as a design team member, um, even as a contractor, you're looking for team members all of the time, uh, team members with experience. And so Woodworks has released um, just last year, the Woodworks Innovation Network, which is meant to do this connecting um, between uh, everyone with mass timber experience. So um, eventually we'll open up this network to other things around tall wood, around offsite modular, around innovative light frame, but we started with mass timber because that's where we saw the immediate need. So if I were a developer, I'll, I'll take you on a little visual tour of, of navigating the, the Woodworks Innovation Network. Um, so if you, if you go to our Web page there, which is woodworksinnovationnetwork.org. Uh, uh, you can click on um, uh, projects near you. You can go and, and type in um, a, a city or a state. Um, so here we're going to look closer at Denver. And uh, the map will pop up with all of these projects, and anything that's on this map is either in construction or completed. So none of the, uh, the, the pending in design projects like the other map that I showed you. And, uh, and then you can scroll down through this list of projects, right? You can click on here's plat 15 in Denver. Um, you'll see that it's, uh, it's, won a it's won a wood design award from Woodworks, um, but there's lots of useful information about this project and some uh, photographs. Uh, you'll see things like if, and this is all self-reported um, uh, by project team members. Uh, so that might have something around construction cost. It might not. Um, it should have something around the construction type from the code. And, uh, and then you can find people. Um, you can find firms and people. So here's one, um, a direct link to the architect and even a way to contact him. Um, here's a direct link to the structural engineer for this project, a little bit about him, a little bit about what his firm does, um, some other projects that they might have done. 
and then again, a way to contact him directly. So it's really meant to, you know, as you look around, as you explore in the project map, um, meant to intrigue uh, uh, people, and then to find out more about that project, about that project team, about how they learned um, what they did, and then really to connect um, people who are looking for team members. Also around the, the developer needs, um, there's certainly been a need for a business case, um, making the business case for Mass Timber. So we're actively working on this. Um, we started with uh, spec offices and uh, we'll be rolling that out to other project types as well. So um, the business case data for developers, this is one area um, that we have that is not on our website. Um, but if you're interested, you can contact any one of us at Woodworks for further information and uh, we can get you in touch. If you're a developer, we can get you in touch with this data. It is confidential, so um, we do uh, like to keep it um, to, to, to developers, but it's absolutely essential in information um, for what they're looking for. So beyond sort of the cost of the project, things about um, uh, leasing velocity, things around, um, you know, what were the hurdles that they experienced? Um, uh, what were the, the um, cost savings? Uh, what were they surprised around? Um, but also uh, just a, a lot of, uh, a lot more data than you see in a typical case study. And finally, um, some of the hurdles that we've seen around um, ever growing in this market as we've um, grown the market have been around insurance, um, whether that's insurance brokers or insurance providers, uh, whether that is for, um, uh, whether that's for builder's risk insurance or whether that's for fixed property insurance. Um, so to that end, we're co-authoring a white paper um, that'll come out soon. I know it's been drafted. Uh, we're co-authoring that with an experienced mass timber insurance broker. Um, but meanwhile, we've put on our website available for anyone to go and look at it, a roundup of testing data and results, because um, that's what the insurance industry is, is really looking for, is this body of work that's been done um, and, uh, uh, and what were the results around it. We can also do education one-on-one -on -one with insurance brokers uh, or insurance providers. Um, to, and because that information has been changing so rapidly, right? What we knew a few years ago, um, we've definitely added to that knowledge since then. So um, insurance works at definitely a slower pace than that. So um, there's definitely ways to um, help your insurance providers catch up. And then um, finally, I wanted to, to wrap up with, um, you know, uh, we're, we're seeing so many great talks and really, um, uh, really leading up towards this end of the month event um, that's been uh, physically located here in Portland for a long time, but is, is called the, the International Mass Timber Conference um, that we've definitely seen exponential growth at. It's virtual this year. Uh, we're excited to be a co-host for that. So um, there's still time to sign up. Go and, and sign up at mass, uh, masstimberconference.com. Um, it's a three-day conference. There's over 40 speakers, over 100 exhibitors. Uh, there's over 1,000 attendees, and there'll be lots of networking opportunities. And I'm really excited um, because my one of my favorite things about the Mass Timber Conference has always been the project tours. And this year there's eight tours that you can attend. Um, they're for projects, they're on forestry, they're um, on laboratories and manufacturing facilities. Uh, so a lot going on at this conference. And with that, um, I'm just gonna leave you with, uh, you know, we're here and available at Woodworks to US designers and design teams. Um, uh, available for a lot of free support. And, um, and don't forget, if you're not from the US, don't forget that there's a program that's, uh, that's probably a lot like ours, um, local to you as well. So uh, that's what we're here to, to connect on. 
So I'm happy, I think we've got lots of time here um, for some questions and I'd be happy to take questions. Thanks, Janelle. It's Woodworks is just such an amazing resource and you're, you're continually adding to it to answer all the growing number of questions. So thanks for everything you're doing with that. Um, here's a, here are a couple of questions to start with. Is there any construction productivity data that you can share? That's an interesting question. Um, I don't have any at my fingertips, but it's it's uh, it would depend on um, on what you mean. If you mean if the if the question is really uh, how much like mass timber panels can be installed in a day um, by square footage, that I can get my hands on um, pretty quickly. Um, at a, a larger scale. Uh, I would definitely be looking to um, my contacts in the, the, the GC arena to provide some anecdotal information around that. And then um, we've got lots of research partners who are working on, on things like that based on the different various styles of construction. Another question, just some very positive comments coming in as well, too. Uh, the one on the CLT blast testing was done at the Redstone Arsenal in Alabama, and that is a training base for the military EOD careers. As a military spouse, this is super cool. Yet, and I know that, that that got a lot of views, that blast testing. That was uh, seemed to communicate really well with a big audience. Do you have anything more on that? Or the, the actually the growing interest in the GSA and military and all of this so the U.S. government interest in mass timber. Do you have any information you can share on that? Yeah, it was a really exciting project and, and one with a lot of partners right at the, the, the U.S. military level. And then um, the, the biggest partner was, was Lend-Lease as they uh, erected the, the panels for testing. Um, it was their contracts with the military to build those um, hotels uh, that they're still in the process of, of building across the U.S. The Redstone National was absolutely the first. Uh, we do have a really great case study about that project on our website. Um, I love that case study because it really goes through and it breaks down from a contractor's perspective. Like these are the hotels that we, we've done in the past and that we have a lot of data around. This is a new type of hotel for us and yet we still managed to save labor and schedule. Um, and so that, that was exciting. And that's one of the reasons that the, the military um, gave the green light on doing the blast resistant testing and doing more projects. So um, it's really always fun uh, to have that sort of synergy um, between all of those different organizations to make something like that um, happen and, and move forward in, in, the, in code. Next question is about California specifically. And I think you were in that region for a long time. Now you're in the Pacific Northwest. Could you just kind of define your region now as what, what you cover with for Woodworks? Sure. So um, uh, I was in California. I was in Northern California uh, where I supported Northern California, uh, Nevada, Utah, and at one time Colorado as well. Um, and then uh, recently uh, I had someone take, um, uh, who's covering my role in, in Northern California while I moved up to support the Pacific Northwest. So now my region is Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Alaska, and Hawaii. Uh, so quite a few there, but it's still very, uh, very regional. Yeah, and you're so connected to such that fast Woodworks network, but that's still a big territory. <laughs> yes, I've been a, I've been a part of Woodworks for seven years and a and a consulting engineer um, for for twelve years before that. Um, so yeah, it's just a, a matter of learning all the the who's who in the the wood world, and we're actually a pretty small community. Um, so uh, just a couple of degrees of separation, right? <laughs> right, Greg. <laughs> Instead of seven. Instead of seven. Well, you're connected to so many people. Uh, here's a specific question from Kimberly. What grant or cost sharing resources may be available for mass timber projects in California? Yeah, good question. So um, a couple of years ago, there was a California mass timber competition. 
So there was a grant at that time um, for that. That wasn't specific to tall wood or anything like that, but around mass timber. Um, they haven't done that again, but of course there have been uh, other things on the governor's mind um, uh, since, since that was initiated. Um, annually, and it's not specific to California, but there has been the Wood Innovation Grant and the, the Forest Service runs that and uh, they do have local representatives that, that assist with that. Um, Woodworks, we've certainly on a regional basis um, con connected design teams to those grants um, and helped uh, look them over and, and talk about the, the reasons for those grants. Uh, so what's important to them. Um, uh, so there's a, there's a lot of assistance out there. Um, I think uh, coming up later in the week, um, uh, someone's talking about some of the um, investment opportunities. Again, that's not specific to California, um, but there's a lot of uh, growing interest in this in California as a state. Um, a lot of things that were done under executive order in 2018 um, to, uh, to do some studies. And so now the, the fruits of those studies are, are starting to come out. So definitely um, keep in touch with uh, uh, the Woodworks representatives in California are Chelsea Drenick and Mike Romanowski. Chelsea covers Northern California and Mike covers Southern California. So stay in touch with them because um, uh, that those opportunities change annually. And you're, you're, you're uniquely qualified, I would say. You know California so well and now the whole supply chain of Pacific Northwest and the whole West Coast region is such a boom for mass timber. It's been really exciting to watch, definitely, and to be involved in. I okay, have yeah, another question. This one from Kendra Burns. How do you match designs that have been waiting to come true to fruition after a code has been updated? How do you, uh, let's see here. How do you match designs um, when there's code updates? Yeah, and I kind of, I kind of, kind of, because I'm, yeah, some of these projects take years and then the codes are dynamic. So that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, uh, that is a good question. And um, I would say that I've been involved with projects where um, maybe they designed under an, an earlier code, like a like the 2013 CBC or something. And mass timber wasn't introduced until the 2016 CBC, until the 2015 uh, IBC. So, in those cases, it's it's on a jurisdictional basis where you say, um, uh, AHJ, are you willing, um, you know, this is now in the code, are you willing to allow that material? Um, and, it, and it just depends. Some jurisdictions want the whole design to be under one code. Um, some jurisdictions will allow you to do uh, uh, codes, especially if they know that they're coming but um, it's super, super regional in that case. So um, it's, it's always a, a discussion that design teams should have with their code officials. Um, I would say that uh, a lot of times when you're so far along in, in a design, um, you do stay with the, the code that you're under. You know, with the tall wood projects, um, you know, there's a, a lot of things that we're excited to see for uh, code change proposals around opening up more um, avenues for exposing mass timber in some of the, the new tall wood code type provisions. Um, but, uh, uh, and there's certainly projects that have gone through the alternative means and methods request process to make some of those things happen, like the intro project in Cleveland um, and, and a couple other projects that are in design currently. They've worked with their local jurisdiction to say, um, these things are coming. Meanwhile, we're gonna show you through our, our performance-based design um, that, that this can work, that this can meet or exceed code. Um, so there are avenues to that, but it's not um, as straightforward as uh, just using the code that you're in. 
That's a lot to keep track of. It's great that Woodworks is there to check in just, just to find out. Um, another question from Kendra. I worked in Seattle area and found out that code was in the way of six or more story buildings in that state. But I met designers that had already had buildings that were past the six stories for many years. Um, yeah, so, so one thing to keep in mind with um, the code in terms of stories and heights is that uh, there are provisions to put things on top of um, uh, podiums and podium isn't actually a defined term in the code, but on top of type one construction in terms of um, section 510.2. So sometimes when we talk about wood projects and we see that there's a, a, a story limit of five stories or a story limit of six stories, or now there's a story limit of up to 18 stories, um, what we're talking about is the levels of wood construction, um, but you can still put that on top of a type 1a construction and your entire building say could be six stories but it'll be a, a five over one in that condition so um so sometimes talking stories is 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 not enough uh also like i just mentioned there's a whole lot of exceptions right we went through a whole um project series there's actually three or four projects now in sacramento uh that um in Sacramento, California, that are six stories of light frame construction. Um, some are on top of podiums. So some are eight and a half stories tall. Um, some are seven stories tall um, with, uh, with light frame construction. And that's, uh, that's beyond code. Um, that was a, a, a whole series of alternative means and methods request pro uh, processes that went through with the design team and the um, co-consultant and woodworks and the jurisdiction. So um, there are always exceptions uh, to, to what's out there. Now we just have a, a comment from Lech Mozinski. He's gonna be speaking as well. It's great talk and great work on part of woodworks. Um, so I, I think I might be moment of coming up on the end of the hour, we might conclude there, but I think you've shared a lot of information about woodworks is just a great resource. You are the go-to organization for a lot of people with questions, everything regarding Mass Timber. Thank you very much, Like I actually remember, like, and he probably wouldn't remember this, but I remember him from um, when I was an undergraduate, I did a, a, an exchange program at the University of Maine when he was out there. Um, so the, the love of wood, you get that young, and um, people like like Leck and those kind of professors um, make a make a really big impact on, uh, on your future career. So um, a shout out to all those research institutions that are, are educating the, the next generation of, of wood uh, engineers and wood scientists. Perfect, I think that's a great way to end. Um, thank you, Janelle, thank you, Lech, thank you, audience. And uh, please join us online. Uh, Lech will be giving a speech, uh, a presentation next week. Thank you for all you do and see you at the Mass Timber Conference. Thanks very much.